Yes, 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 yes. All day long, cannabis is can be a powerful way shower and path maker. And let's talk about why. Starting with this word, foundational word, orientation. It originally was an architectural term and it referred to a building facing east in the simplest terms. And that was the desire, that was often the goal. It made sense in a lot of ways for buildings to capture the benefits of, you know, um, passive energy just by facing east and being poised to receive light. And when you even consider Orient, the east, um, it's there. So it is, it, it is grounding. I mean, just by virtue of, you know, the, the isness of that word to orient, you know, is to, you know, to have your foundation built and established in a particular way, facing a particular direction. So if you can imagine wanting to drive to New York, which is east, and you think that you are headed that way when in fact you were turned around at the start of your journey and so you've actually been traveling in the opposite direction uh, that lacking information that that lacking piece of accurate information is not going to get you to New York you know so um, I, I bring this up orientation I bring it up because it is um it influences more than you know just architecture and construction um orientation applies also to our psyche i'm and to uh the way that we learn to be in the world the way that we are socialized and conditioned by society religion traditions um education and of course the really overpowering influence and presence of um, government force and authority all those ways not you know and then second level would be like say advertisers and and that kind of it. i mean because they too are all interested and all have a they have a vested interest in our psyches being oriented toward not the east, which is you know that which um, can receive light, but toward a different direction, toward a direction of um, hyper materialism and consumption, um, of fractured mind, kind of like the schizoid um, turned upon itself. Uh, you know, like self-eating, <laughs> that's really bleak, but uh, we are not traditionally set up for whole-mindedness, okay? Dang, I think that is pretty un incontestable. Um, and so by those different influencers, um, we receive consistent messaging to um, behave right and to know our place and to act accordingly and um, so that is not right it is not right that uh, someone would put their blueprint on you it's it is is the intention of you having life to uh, express life through you as you and that's been infringed upon us by a variety of sources. And because of the self-revelatory nature of cannabis, it is a, a particularly effective companion 
in getting to know you, your blueprint, without the fingerprints, interpretations, translations, coercions, and all this other put upon you. You get to you get to meet and know you. And the reason I'm harping on that is because that is where everything else springs from in an ideal state. Life wishes and urges to express itself that is seen in the blade of grass in a city on a sidewalk where thousands of feet are, it's not ideal, but that blade of grass finds its way. Life will, it urges it to be. And that's the truth in the case for us. And I am inspired to bring attention to the fact that our eyes and mind and energy and life force has been hijacked by, you know, trivial distraction, bread and circus. And what we've been missing is um, a it's, it's a really rich world, the verdant, the green world. <clears throat> and it's one that uh, most of us in modern life, who, and we've been oriented not toward the East, but oriented toward um, a really self-interested agenda. <laughs> um, we've been di disconnected from there's a certain uh, like primal wisdom that is impossible to describe. It's like trying to, <laughs> it's like trying to describe like an orgasm to a virgin. It's just very difficult. <clears throat> and so that's why I'm just, I, why I advocate for the responsible, direct experience that one could have themselves because um, the layers of otherness put upon us is thick. And when used skillfully, when used with um, just focused intention, you just start a quest with just the, the yearning, I wish to know myself better, minus these other um, secondary and less important traits about you. You want to know you, that's where you want to radiate from and, and launch from and live from and dream and love and work from. Cannabis helps to show the way and make the path by <clears throat> freeing, not, you know, even if just for a moment in time, but by, by suspending those limiting layers, just pushing pause on them, pushing pause on them. And then what, you know, how do you behave? What is it that you get done without that constant chatter of insufficiency and, and unworthiness, et cetera? What do you get done? There's more to be said about, about how to um, journey in this way, how to um, basically develop this kind of relationship with a teaching plant. Okay. Um, and it needs to be said. There's much to be said and it needs to be said. And that is what uh, is going on here. So I'm giving gratitude and honor and 
testimony to uh, the, some of the deeper uses and the, um, of an elevated state with cannabis. And um, yeah, I'm sure it is cool and fun to game while high and do a number of things while high. Enjoy them, enjoy them all. But consider, you know, consider visiting the edges of your limits, of your consciousness. And in, enjoy doing so in the freedom of those uh, learned behaviors of restriction, prohibition, forbidden fruit, being shown all these trees of delicious fruit that you can't eat it. Mm. No, <laughs> there's an alternative path that includes the eating of the fruit. And why would or should you be denied that? in any way. So with an unhindered mind, that's really what this is coming down to, with a mind that's been unencumbered, unhindered, what that kind of mind can see and then fall in love with and then make happen oof, is powerful and it's threatening. And it should be pursued and enjoyed anyway. So I waxed and waned a little poetically about uh, cannabis this episode. But uh, next Sunday, I'm going to be sharing much more um, science-based, fact-based evidence and um, information that will support a lot of what I've um, shared this time. So it'll be of particular interest and relevance to those of you that consider yourself highly sensitive or perceptive, um, empathic, or um, you know just kind of energetically aware. Um, yeah, it'll be especially for you. And if um, anything that you heard in this time together, if it resonated with you, then I ask that you share it and consider supporting it. Um, and conversely, if anything that you heard um, triggered you or, you know, sent you or, or, or somehow made you feel uh, negative or, or, or uncomfortable, then um, I'd love to hear more about it in the comments. Uh, I'm not inviting, uh, you know, cruel talk. I'm not inviting rudeness and, and, and argument. But I, I am inviting and very much want um, conversation and for it to be open so that, you know, all eyeballs can see that, you know, like uh, considerate adult conversation about taboos and things that, you know, We've been trained like, you know, uh, like an animal that we've been trained to not talk about. And we regard as like impolite or whatever. And so they stay intact. They stay alive and well. And, and often they're the things under there that we need. So I want to give some air and light to this. Thank you so much for the honor of your um, time and attention. Those are great gifts and I'm thankful for them. See you next week. And until then, wherever you stand, be the soul of that place.